let's take a look at how to edit text in Illustrator. I'm going to show you both text options as well as the character and paragraph options and all the styling that you can use here in Illustrator. First off, the text tool or type tool is the letter T as the shortcut. It's also the letter T as the icon here in your tool panel. There's a lot of different type tools, but generally you're just going to grab that first one and use that. There's two ways to make type here in Illustrator. The first way is just to click. This is called point type. This type does not wrap. There's no text box involved. And then you can also click and drag with the type tool to create area type. Now the easiest way to get outside of selected type is to press the escape key. That's going to take you right back to your selection tool. That way you can move around your text boxes or your point type. Now with text boxes, the edges or the boundaries change the size of the text box, allowing the text to wrap with point type. It actually scales the text. So you can see as I scale it up because I grab the corner, the text scales and skews with it. You can also hold shift, which I would recommend to keep the text in line. Now, which one would you use? Well, if you need your text to wrap or you're trying to keep it contained in a certain space or within a certain bounds, I would use the text box or the area type. If you want to really quickly resize text, maybe you have a couple words and you're just trying to put them out there in your document, then I would use the point type or just clicking on my document. And to edit existing text, all you have to do is double click on that text box and you'll be able to go into the type tool and edit the text. Okay, so how about all the text options? If we look up in the window drop down, you either have the properties panel open or you can actually find type down here. You have character, character styles, glyphs. The main ones I use are character and paragraph, but these are available in your properties panel. So when you have type selected, your properties panel should be over here on the right. And if we look at the appearance panel, character panel and paragraph panel, that's where we can make most of our text adjustments. First off, the fill of your text is the color of your text. So we could change that fill to change the color of our text. We can also add a stroke to our text. I'm going to type in 10 point right here. And that stroke is the same color. So it looks like it bolded our text, although some text options have a bold. So I would use that before you just add a stroke. But if you wanted to add a white stroke or anything around your text, uh, 10 point might be a little bit too much. So you can see I added a little white stroke there or a darker stroke, anything like that. You can add a stroke here, which is basically a line around your text. I have a couple tutorials on the channel about how to add strokes on the outside of your text, not on the inside of your text. So I'll link those down below if you want that effect. Now, next up in the character panel, we can change the font that we're using. So I could change the font here. I can click and see as I'm scrolling over the different fonts, how it's affecting. It's changing out in my document. So I could pick a serif font, for instance, for this text here on the left. We can also change its different characteristics here. So if you have an italic or a bold involved in that font, it'll allow you to adjust that here. We have the font size. You can change the sizing right here. You can type it in. You can use the arrows. You can even use this quick drop down. Right here is the line spacing. With this piece of text, I can't do anything with that. But if I have this text grabbed over here, I can actually adjust the line spacing. So now you can see the line spacing increases as I'm making that adjustment over there. Next up, we have kerning and letter spacing. Kerning adjusts the spacing between two letters. So if I click between the S and the U, I can actually use these adjustments to adjust the spacing between between two letters only. Whereas if I have this all selected, I can make adjustments between all the letters with this text tracking or letter spacing, just like that. So we can space out all the letters individually, or we can use kerning to space out the spaces in between letters. Now, all these panels have these three dots generally, and that means there's more options. So you can quickly change the case of your text just by clicking some of these options. You can superscript or subscript text. You can underline or strike through. You can also change the anti-aliasing, which is like when there's curved parts of your text and that's gonna save out as a rasterized image. This affects how that text appears in that rastered image. And whether the pixels around the curves are crisp or they're strong or they're bold or there's no real softening or anti-aliasing. So that's some stuff that you can affect there. In the paragraph panel, we can adjust our justification really quick and easy with these buttons right here. So this paragraph text right here, if we zoom in a little bit so you can see that a little bit better. Right now it's aligned to the left. We can align center to the right. We can also justify, which basically means the text will adjust the 
spacing to hit the edge of your text box over here. And you might notice that there's some hyphens on there. So we can actually click these more options and uncheck hyphenate if you don't want the text to hyphenate. We can also adjust any of these different spacing and indent options. There's even bullets and numbering here in Illustrator now if you're updated. And there's even in the more options, there's even more options up here to the right. So you can adjust any of these. Now, one more thing I want to show you about text box or area types, there's area type options. You in fact have an entire type drop down up here at the top of Illustrator. So there's tons of options here. You can convert an area type or text box to point type and vice versa. We can take point type and create a text box with that. You also have area type options. So in these area type options, you can adjust the width and the height of your text box. You can change the number of rows and columns, adjust offset, even align it within the text box. Right now, our text goes all the way through the text box. But if it was smaller than the actual text box, we could align it to the center of the text box. That can be helpful or the top or bottom. We can also adjust how the text flows and you can auto size as well. So the text box would auto resize. You can see how it expanded to show all the text within the text box. And if you have this preview button checked, you'll see any of these adjustments preview in your document as you're working on them. I'm going to turn auto size off and hit OK. We'll go back up to the type options. You can find and replace. You can change the case really quickly here. So if I wanted this to be all uppercase, I don't have to go and type it all in uppercase. I can change it really easily with those options. I can also insert special characters. Once again, the bullets and numbering are here as well. Optical margin alignment if needed. Creating outlines. If you are done with your text and your document and you're sending it away or putting it into a PDF, it might be a good idea because they may not have a font or in the instance of printing this, if you're sending a document to a printer, you'll want to outline your text. If they don't have the fonts, then they won't be able to preview that text properly or print it properly. So to outline it, it's going to remove any editing capabilities. It's going to turn your text text into shapes. So if we were to go back up to type and go to create outlines, now these this text is in shapes, right? So you're not able to edit this anymore. And there's no real reversing this. Illustrator doesn't remember the font that you used to create these shapes. You've now just created shapes. So that's when you're really finalizing things. You'll want to keep it editable as long as possible. And for anyone that has that font to be able to use. Now you can thread text boxes together. If your text runs outside of the frame, you can actually click on that plus icon. It's a little small, I've got to zoom in, but I could click on this plus icon and now you see some text involved in my cursor. I could draw another text box. And so now you can see that this text box goes to this next text box, just like that. So you can thread these text boxes together and it shows you uh, which one goes to the next one. And up here in the type, options. You can see threaded text. You can release the selection or remove threading. You can also create threading if your text goes beyond the text box that you currently have. So your text boxes can flow through each other. That's usually what I call it. I don't call it threading. I, you know, I, I call it flowing. So the text flows to the next text box. If you need that in your document, it's pretty easy to do here in Illustrator. Now, all this being said, I'm pretty much just running through all the different text options here in Illustrator. But one thing I want to say is Illustrator is not the best program for working with text. Generally, if you were working on a document that looks like this, it has a bunch of text on it. And it's like a page or a spread. I would do that in InDesign, but it's not impossible to do here in Illustrator. InDesign is just much better at working with text than, than Illustrator. I mean, Illustrator literally just got bullets and numbering and it's 2022. So I would highly recommend going over to InDesign. You might be frustrated at first because the program seems different than Illustrator, but eventually you'll find that when you have projects where you're working with a lot of text, even a brochure, anything like that, you're probably going to want to go to InDesign first. Illustrator, still, you can work with text, you can create things. I mean, if you're doing like a business card design, it might be easier here in Illustrator, but um, I would recommend you look at InDesign for sure when you're working with a lot of text. And hopefully this was a good beginner Illustrator tutorial for you guys, and you know a little bit more about the capabilities of working with text here in Illustrator.